I was again struck by what I had heard was the hardest thing to do in the B-2 and that is to refuel it in flight. The level of coordination it takes to bring those two aircraft together um, for security reasons and, and practical reasons is, is intense. It's so close, it, it looks like you can reach through the, through the windscreen and touch it. it it's, it's incredibly close and none of it is automated, none of it. The thing with the B-2 is that you have to hand fly those refuelings. What I was amazed by is it's not that you stick it and you might think your logic might tell you that you, you, get, the, you get the boom in and then you apply maybe a little forward stick pressure and maybe just a, a, a tiny, tiny bit of throttle and you hold it there and you're good. Just the opposite. You can see the incredibly minute adjustments that Wolf, who was flying the airplane, made uh, as impressive of a display of airmanship as I've ever seen, and this is on a clear day. His hand is moving um, in, in these minute corrections, his right hand, his left hand is making um, surprisingly sometimes large corrections in the power for four motors on the B-2, but his eyes, he is he's just fiercely concentrated. I mean, no deviation, you watch, he doesn't look down, he doesn't look up left or right. It's just an incredible level of focus and concentration. What's spooky about it is when the boom passes over your head because the boom's coming at you and it just right as it looks as it's gonna be there. And remember, you're sitting in the jet, so I'm here. I can touch the, you know, the, the, basically the roof of the aircraft and, and the refueling boom is right behind. And so it's, it's just feet away, literally feet away. And we're flying it at, at whatever the airspeed is, parked underneath, holding station, if you will, right underneath the other airplane. So when it, when it passes over, it's an eerie, eerie moment. Uh, and then it, it seats and then it starts.